Thoughts in a Garden, A Marvel. These are the thoughts of a solitary individual with an intense focus on the verdant surroundings. There is a reproach to the persons who see everything in terms of winning a competition. If heaven is on earth, it will be found in the quietness of nature. The speaker seems to think that the Garden of Eden was happiest without the addition of woman or even anyone else. What underlies this desire for solitude? Every season is important, and as busy as we keep ourselves, our time is not managed any better than the bee. Life gauged through nature is quality time. Thoughts in a Garden How vainly men themselves amaze to win the palm, the oak or bays and their uncessant labor see crowned from some single herb or tree, whose short and narrow virgin shade does prudently their toils upbraid, while all the flowers and trees do close to weave the garlands of repose. Fair quiet, have I found thee here, and innocence thy sister dear? Mistaken long I sought you then in busy companies of men, your sacred plants, if here below, only among the plants will grow. Society is all but rude to this delicious solitude. No white nor red was ever seen so amorous as this lovely green. Fond lovers cruel as their flame cut in these trees their mistress name. Little alas they know or heed how far these beauties hers exceed. Fair trees, where'er, sir, where'er your barks I wound, no name shall but your own be found. When we have run our passion's heat, love hither makes his best retreat. The gods that mortal beauty chase still in a tree did end their race. Apollo hunted Daphne so, only that she might laurel grow. And Pan did after Syrinx speed, not as a nymph, but for a reed. What wondrous life in this I lead, ripe apples drop about my head, the luscious clusters of the vine upon my mouth do crush their wine, the nectarine and curious peach into my hands themselves do reach, stumbling on melons as I pass, ensnared with flowers I fall on grass. Meanwhile the mind from pleasure less withdraws into its happiness. The mind, that ocean where each kind does straight in its own resemblance find, yet it creates transcending these far other worlds and other seas, annihilating all that's made to a green thought in a green shade. Here at the fountain's sliding foot or at some fruit tree's mossy root, casting the body's vest aside, my soul into the boughs does glide. There, like a bird, it sits and sings, then wets and combs its silver wings, and, till prepared for longer flight, waves in its plumes the various light. Such was that happy garden state, while man there walked without a mate. After a place so pure and sweet, what other help could yet be meet? But twas beyond a mortal share to wander solitary there. Two paradises twere in one, to live in paradise alone. How well the skillful gardener drew of flowers and herbs this dial new, where from above the milder sun does through a fragrant zodiac run. And as it works, the industrious bee computes its time as well as we. How could such sweet and wholesome hours be reckoned but with herbs and flowers?